Well, hello everybody and welcome to T Freak Adventures YouTube channel. I'm Wayne and this is episode number two of the series that has me installing an aftermarket stereo system in my 2002 Chevy Astro van. And uh, this is a, uh, a pretty big project because I'm wanting to put a really modern system in uh, kind of an older vehicle. And so uh, there are some things that I'm kind of having to come up with as we go. And uh, there are a few little hacks that I'm going to have to make. I'll, and I'll, I'll show those to you as we go through the series. So uh, if you watched uh, the last episode, it was really an overview of everything that I'm going to do. And so I'm going to break the build down into stages. And so this is stage two, which involves building our wiring harness, right? So uh, this is the wiring harness that came with the new aftermarket stereo and uh, this is the aftermarket uh, I'm sorry the uh, wiring harness adapter that I got from Metra uh, that fits my 2002 Chevy Astro and um, so uh, obviously you can't just hook the vehicle's wiring harness right into the radio. I mean, look at the difference in these plugs. Uh, so this goes into the radio and then this goes into the vehicle wiring harness. So you've got to have uh, both of these. This comes with the stereo and this you have to buy extra. Now, let me show you uh, this too. Uh, one of the, th I tell you what, just let me show you everything that I've got here, okay? So these are the items that you're going to be needing. Of course, this is the wiring harness that came with the stereo. And this is the wiring harness that is going to plug into the vehicle's existing wiring harness. And this came from Metra. And uh, they were really cool uh, about putting on the back of the bag that it came in. They have a... Uh, kind of a, a key to tell you what the different colors are for. And so uh, what I've already done is I took this wiring harness from the stereo, the, the aftermarket stereo, the new one, which is got tags on every wire to tell you what they go to, okay? And I cross-referenced it with this list to make sure that all of these wires are going to match up and that I'm not going to have any that are like one color here and a different color here. So I did that ahead of time and everything matches up. I am going to have a few extra wires on this harness and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing with those. Um, this is an antenna output and this is if you have a power antenna on your vehicle and I do not, so I don't need that. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> In this stereo, I may actually disconnect my antenna uh, on the vehicle, like actually take it off the vehicle, because uh, the whole purpose that I bought this for is so that I could use CarPlay and I use Apple Music, so I don't really need an antenna. Uh, this is the remote output wire. Uh, this would be like if you were powering on a sub or... Um, an amplifier, I guess, because you would power on the amplifier with this, not the sub. Um, I'm not going to use it for an amplifier power on right now. Eventually, I will have an amplifier and some subs in this van. But right now, this wire is going to power this little thing, which I shared with you in the last video, is the DIY bypass, which allows me to be able to play video while the van is in motion. And so this bypasses the parking brake. And so this wire will uh, connect to, I believe, the blue wire, yes, on this DIY bypass. And then let's see, there should be this right here is the parking brake input. That is what the green wire 
from um, this DIY bypass connects to and then the black wire from this just connects to uh, my ground uh, which is uh, there's one of these is is the ground yeah right here ground so so there you go that that's that that's got that everything else is labeled except for these uh, and, and goes to the wiring harness except for these two wires right here and these are amazing my other stereo does not have this and i wish that it did the pioneer that i paid golly 150 dollars more for doesn't have this this powers your front and rear camera straight from the stereo like on my silverado with the pioneer system i had to uh, kind of create a a hack for this if you will i tapped into one of the 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 power from a cigarette lighter in the truck to power my rear camera because i wanted it to be on all the time not just when i put the vehicle into reverse and so this is going to allow me to power that camera straight from the stereo so this will connect to um this will connect to the red wire that's attached to the video cable on my rear camera that's going to make life so much easier uh, for me and then this if i wanted to have a front camera that's a power cable for that one as well and then this is for your the input for your uh what your uh, microphone in cab microphone and so uh, I'll actually install that permanently somewhere in the vehicle and uh, it'll look like it was made to be in there okay so you need this you need this you need uh, you don't have to but I'm gonna use a soldering iron I always like to solder these connections together so you soldering iron and uh, some solder and uh, I purchased this soldering iron it's a little kit that I found on Amazon comes with this stand the soldering iron the solder and uh, actually comes with um, this carrying case here with all this other stuff in it and I think I paid about $30 for this so I have used this a lot it's been a great soldering iron really inexpensive and then the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put heat shrink on these connections once I uh, make the connection and uh, you're supposed to use like a, a heat gun to shrink this heat shrink but I don't have a heat gun I don't think a hair dryer will get hot enough and so what I have found is that one of these cheap lighters uh, will work to shrink heat shrink you just light it and you hold it under there and look what it does you just kind of move it around a little bit and it shrinks right up now you have to be careful not to get your um, not to get your wires you don't want to hit the, the plastic on your wires because you'll melt that wire so uh, I'm just gonna shrink like the middle portion that's actually uh, covering up these connections okay so let's see oh and you need a LaCroix you don't have to have a LaCroix but everything goes better when you have a LaCroix so that's that that's everything so uh, let, let's uh, let's get started here okay so these wires are pre-skinned. Uh, actually, they're crimped. They're, they're already cut, so all you have to do is pull them off. A trick that I like to do is when I pull these ends off, I don't just pull them straight off because this is all stranded wire, and then it's going to just be kind of frayed. And so I like to twist it counterclockwise. I'm sorry, clockwise, not counterclockwise. Twist it clockwise as you pull it off and then what that does is that tightens that wire uh, and make sure 
that it doesn't fray when you pull it off like that. Now see how tight that is? Now, there are lots of different ways to do this, and this is probably not the right way to do it. Everybody has their own way of doing things. This is my way, and it may not be the right way. If you have a different way, put it in the comments. First thing I'm gonna do is put my heat shrink on here. And uh, note that I cut that sheet heat shrink in half. I don't need as big of a piece, all right? Then I like to put a little crimp in this wire right here. See that? And then I'll take this other wire and I'll crimp it the other way. And then I twist them. Like I said, there are different ways to do stuff. This may not be the best way. This is just my way. And then I will uh, put, I'll put my solder, I'll solder these two pieces together. And again, lots of different, I mean, I'm not like um, a professional when it comes to soldering. I kind of taught myself how to do this. So like I'll clean my tip first. I always like to put a little solder on the tip. And then I'll just touch it to the wire to get things started. And I will just finish soldering this. Take a look at it. Pretty good. It's it's there. It's together. I don't think it's going to come apart. Right now, I just need to slide my heat shrink right there, and I'm going to hold this up because I don't want to get my cutting board messed up. I'll shrink it on that side a little bit, shrink it up here on the top. You, you see how I'm just kind of touching the flame barely to that heat shrink and it is closing up as I do that. Again, if you have a hot air gun, it would be so much better than doing it this way, but I don't have one. And so this is just another way you can do it. Now, that is soldered well, um, it's twisted together, and it's heat shrinked. This is not going anywhere. So now it's just a matter of doing this 15 more times. So I'm not going to make you watch that. I'll fast forward through all of that. And uh, if I think of anything along the way that I feel like you need to know, I'll be sure to stop and cut in. Another way that you can do this is to just cross these over and then twist. I don't like that way as much, honestly. I think there's a, a greater potential for them to separate. So that's why I use my method. A little V in it. 
pull this one like this. And then I twist them. So this is the ground that I'm doing next. Here's the ground for this. And remember that I also have to incorporate the ground from this DIY bypass. So now I'm going to have three things to be working with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm going to twist these two together. Okay. And then I'm going to do like I've been doing. It's not pretty, but it's going to work. What I'm doing here is this harness has a power antenna wire, but uh, like I told you, I don't have a power antenna anyway. So I'm just going to put a piece of heat shrink on here and basically terminate this wire. Okay, so this is the parking brake input that goes to this green wire on the DIY bypass. Okay. The only 
thing that I have left is this. The remote output wire, remote output, goes to the blue wire on the DIY bypass. I'm going to take the whole wiring harness and wrap it in electrical tape so that it'll look like one piece other than these extra pieces that have to hang out here. This, this right here will look like one whole piece when it's done. And um, yeah, there it is, a finished wiring harness. All right, so yeah, this, this little project, it's not difficult. Anybody could do it. Uh, you just need basic soldering skills. You just match your colors up uh, and take your time and go through every step every time because that's where I messed up is I was trying to get ahead of myself. I was getting too fast and I kept forgetting to put the heat shrink on here. Uh, you have to put the heat shrink on before you solder these wires together because there's no way to get that heat shrink on there once you have done your soldering work. So these I'm going to have to go back and um, put some tape around those to get those insulated. Then, like I said, I'll take some tape, wrap it around the whole thing to give it that uh, wiring harness feel and look. And uh, this thing will be ready to connect the stereo to the vehicle. So, hope that you found that informative and helpful. And uh, I feel confident that if you want to tackle something like this yourself, uh, you'll be able to do it without any problem. You're probably a whole lot smarter than I am. So, that's that. Uh, thanks for watching. Stage number three. Uh, which will be the next video uh, is going to be cutting the dash for the template uh, by the or using the template to cut the dash for the double den installation. Remember, it's a one and a half den hole, so I've got to do a little bit of cutting, and so uh, that'll be the next video. And uh, from that point forward, it should go pretty quickly. All right, thanks for watching. See you.